we're going to try and bend it as much as we can. We're going to attempt to put his thumb in his own armpit. <laughs> Right? And this gives us a number of things. There's a lot of different submission holds going on here. Right? The first is you're getting this little, little short arm scissors. We're getting this key lock. As, as my wrist blocks this joint and we squeeze it in, it starts to subluxe the joint. Right? That's not going to tap, make him tap. That's not going to stop him fighting, but it's going to be quite uncomfortable for him. As we bring this up, we start extending the rotator cuff muscles and the shoulder's in trouble. And then what we're going to do is we're going to roll the point of our elbow into his spine and just bring his thumb up that way. <laughs> At this point, if we can keep him off the floor, brilliant. We can do whatever we want to. If not, we can just take him there and walk him there. But you can put a lot of force through the, that, that shoulder while you do it. So when this comes on, bend it up and try and make them come down. And then the easiest thing to do is to imagine you're pushing his thumb straight up his spine. Right? And as it comes up to a point, it'll tap. When you feel that that lock has become as uncomfortable as you want it to be, tap. Tap loudly and clearly. When the other person taps, let go straight away. Don't tap until it's on. Right? Because what we, we, need, we both need to trust each other in this situation. We need to trust that if I'm putting a lock on my opponent, my training partner, they will tell me when I have the lock on. And they need to trust that as soon as they tell me, I will let go or, or loosen it off. Either is fine. But if they don't tell me when, they, when it's, it's on, either I'll never learn to put it on, because I'll never go far enough with a lock, or I'll accidentally hurt them, because it'll be too late and they won't have told me. So again, it's all down to communication.